Penny and the Prince for your amusement this afternoon. Now with Prince of Persia 3 we had big ambitions and one of them is we wanted to redefine the action game genre by increasing the pace of action. How do you do that? A couple of reasons, a couple of ways. So number one, we put the Prince under incredible pressure. Pressure because he's being haunted by an evil spirit that coexists inside his own body. I'm not kidding, I'll get to that in a second. He's also hunted by an evil army that's taken over his entire town. He's in an environment that he thought was going to be friendly, but turns out hostile. As the Prince, in order to succeed in your goals, you're going to have to think fast, move fast, and kill fast. And as you can see, Prince of Persia 3 picks up right where Warrior within left off. The Prince is back in his hometown city of Babylon. It is here where he thinks he's coming home to a hero's welcome, but quickly discovers no. The entire town's been taken over by a hostile army. He finds himself trapped and a fugitive on the run and hunted by all. Now what you're about to see here is a key in our gameplay innovation. We call it the speed kill system. This allows you as the prince to surprise your enemy and kill them with one clean shot. Like that. It's going to change the way you look at combat scenes because it's not about sneaking, it's not about hiding. This is called fast and furious fighting. As the prince, you're utilizing your acrobatic skills to kill before being detected. Just like that. How about we take the sword away from him and throw it at his buddy? Yeah! Oh, that dirty old scoundrel. Now what happens once you've been detected? Well, right here, you've got to revert back to the freeform fighting system that was made famous in Prince of Persia, Warrior Within. But provided you have not been detected, and your acrobatic positioning is perfect, you can kill with one clean shot. We're going to show you more of that in a second. But first, what we're loading up right here is a brand new playable character, a key addition in the Prince of Persia Part 3, and that is the Dark Prince. Now, everybody here has got a dark side to your personality, and the Prince is no exception. At the beginning of the game, he's infected by the sands of time. He's exposed to the sands without much protection, and this creates an infection that festers inside of him. Whenever fire is created, allows the prince an opportunity to transform himself into the Dark Prince, an evil and corrupt version of the prince, a more violent and sadistic version of the prince. The Dark Prince represents everything about the prince's personality that he does not like. The opposition and duality of these two characters are the basis for this game, plus the Dark Prince does have his own weapon. That spiked chain thing. Those of you just joining us, we got our new playable character, the Dark Prince, utilizing the speed kill system. Notice how the acrobatic precision mixed with the with the uh, element of surprise enables you to kill with one shot. Now the AI has been completely reworked on this game as well, so that way the enemies can detect you through see through sight and sound. See how that guy hears something? The prince is going to wait on the wall. He does not want to be detected. Once detected, you got to use freeform fighting like a warrior within, which d diminishes your chances of survival. But provided you can be quick. Oh no, he didn't quite get it off, so we're going to have to use freeform fighting. The Dark Prince does have his own set of moves to accompany his new weapon, of course. I want to see that weapon again, that chain thing. We've got to come up with a name for that, like a dragon's tail or something, I don't know. Let me see that spike chain again, Wayne. Can you show it to me again? Yes. Yes, just like that. That's the new Dark Prince utilizing the speed kill system. Again, we want this game to be fast and furious. We want it to be an action game that keeps on moving, which is why we've developed that. Another big payoff for the player is the fact that in the last game, Warrior Within, the Prince is in palaces running around not knowing where he's going. In this game, no, he's on his home turf, the hometown city of Babylon. Now, where does this Dark Prince feel most comfortable in Babylon? None other than the rooftops of Babylon. This is where he reigns supreme, where no longer he is the hunted, he is the Hunter. It is a very impressive arena. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the city of Babylon. Now, okay, that's impressive enough to look at, but it's also a fantastic place for the Dark Prince to do some damage. Since he's such an acrobatic master, this is the point that his acrobatic skills can be put to the ultimate test. Tremendous jumps and huge heights give the player a true sense of vertigo, so be careful, you don't want to fall down while playing. Again, with the ability to sneak up on your, on your enemy, to surprise them, you're able to kill with one clean shot. Now that weapon, that spiked chain, that dragon's tail thing, I'm calling it a weapon, but it's more than that. It's a tool. Notice right here how the Dark Prince utilizes that to navigate his way through the environment quickly and effectively. Not only that, but the chain also provides for some incredible combat-style scenes, like this one right here. The chain around the pole, and we'll slice him in half. 
That's the dark prints right there. Nicely done. Now again, we're going to load up our next scene. The dark prince does exist inside the prince, but the prince does not like him. The prince hates the fact that he has this evil alter ego that is that is living and breathing inside of him. However, when pushed up against the wall, the prince has no choice but to, for survival. He's willing to burn himself to evoke this evil character, so that way he can get the job done. Another thing, we wanted to keep the pace going. Those of you that like an adrenaline rush will like this next scene because the prince, again, he's on the run. He's in the city of Babylon. He must use any means necessary in order to escape. And if that means he's going to steal a chariot, well then fine. Stealing a chariot, he will do. And the chariot race begins. graphics create a real sense of speed. You gotta be careful though. Evil lurking around every corner. Evil, I say evil. What to do here? I'm gonna run this guy off the road somehow, some way. Oh, nicely done. Now, we do not like driving games where the controllers are actually harder to operate than the actual vehicle that you're supposed to be controlling. So what we've done is we've made the steering easy. It's all based upon reflexes. What remains challenging about this part of the game is the fact that there's so many obstacles, like jumps that you have to take, narrow passageways you must go down, plus you've got villains lurking around every corner. You didn't see that. The prince didn't die. Rub, rub your eyes. You didn't see that. At least you know the game's real. You didn't see that either. Rub your eyes again. See, this is one of our developers. This shows you how challenging it is. One of our developers having a little trouble. I would have died long ago, though. Don't get me wrong. Nicely done. Some jumps you know they're coming. Others kind of can take you by surprise, like that one and that one. Other elements coming out that force you to go in certain directions. saw it coming. Now, what do you do when a guy jumps on your chariot like this, one of the villains? All you have to do is get in possession and press the X button. We wanted control-wise this to be very, very simple. The challenge of this game are all the obstacles. That guy was on his cell phone. He wasn't watching where he was going. Oh, and that's it. The prince is dead. He's done for. Game over? Oh, no. His acrobatist prowess comes into play and he lives to survive and fight again. Little hubcap rolling into frame because we at Ubisoft like to entertain ourselves. We're loading up our next scene right now. Those of you just joining us, brand new playable character is the Dark Prince with his own set of skills, his own emotions, and his own weaponry. Plus, we got the brand new speed kill system. This allows you to kill with one clean shot provided your acrobatic placement is perfect and you surprise the enemy. One of the things we brought back from Warrior Within are the boss fights. People love the bosses. So, all right, we've created new bosses. They're bigger they're better, they're more dangerous than ever. As the prince, you've got to figure out what is the weakness within each boss and exploit that weakness as your only chance of survival. Graphically, everything has been redone. The bosses, including the environments in which they'll be fighting in, like this gladiator-style pit that you're about to see. Listen to the sound when he's sharpening his blade. I love that. It's like music to my ears, but I'm sick. What can I tell you? Now, we don't have a name for this guy yet, but clearly he's got he's under an American health care plan, definitely. No, actually, he's been infected with the sands of time. He's deteriorating right now, right before your very eyes, but it doesn't matter. As the prince, you have no time to delay, and you're going to have to fight him, and you're going to have to fight him now. However, this part of our showcase is just a demo, a teaser. If you really want to fight this big boy, you're going to have to play the game yourself. I'm not going to tell you how to defeat that guy, jump on a wall, climb on his head, and poke his eyes out. I said I'm not going to tell you. We believe Prince of Persia 3 is the climax of the Prince of Persia franchise. You've got all of the action from Warrior Within and all of the uniqueness and depth from Sands of Time coming out this fall, available on all platforms. If you've got any questions, we have actual developers standing by. They're from Canada and they're very friendly and they're willing to answer your questions. This is Wade. I'm Aaron. We're from Ubisoft. Prince of Persia coming out this fall. Thank you very much for coming on out and enjoy the rest of your Friday here at E3. Thank you and I'll take any cheap applause that I can generate for myself. Yes, yes, I will. Yes.